Hey from Xiong here, in this video we are going to show you how to get started with DaVinci Resolve 15. It's a free software you can download from the Blackmagic Design website. There's a link in the description below where you can get it. And also of course there is a paid version of this. However the paid version you get like motion blur and also few 3D things and few other things. However if you are just using this for simple editing, simple videos and also like for YouTube videos. You don't really purposely need to get like the paid version you can actually get quite a lot out of the free version so let's get started so I've already installed mine and we are just going to open that and we have resolve starting so it takes a few seconds for it to load a lot of things and I am using the public beta version and I'm actually not quite sure if the full version is already out yet and here we have the opening or the home page and here we can start a new project give it a name and I've actually filmed a event a few days ago at a um, yeah store called Kapok and my friend was actually uh, performing there with a band French Concession so going to press create to make a new project and if this is your first time inside of an editing program I'm going to explain a few things here so here we see two windows the left window is a preview window of your footage inside of the media pool and the right window here is actually the preview of the timeline and here on the left side we have the media pool and the master and here is where we can import video footage and inspector here is where we have also a lot of like control over the image like uh, scale and other yeah, effects we can do that is simple effects. However before we are going to import anything we need to address the project settings. So to do that we go to file here and choose project settings or we go here to project settings this small icon so the main thing why we need to go to project settings first we need to set the frame rate if you have actually imported any footage this frame rate automatically gets uh, locked in so you do want to change this frame rate before you are importing anything so normally it's on 24p however personally I don't really like 24p I rather film in 25p for 25 pal and uh, depending on which country you have you have all these other settings that you can also choose from then on top of here we have timeline resolutions so we can actually choose the resolution we want however I have a custom resolution here that is 2.5k or uh, 104 or 1440p which is uh, yeah 2.5k basically and also you want to change the playback frame rate to be the same as your timeline frame rate and of course you can change like your monitoring to be the same frame rate and depending on which resolution your monitor is and for the rest you don't really need to change anything else you can change where the cache is uh, depending uh, where you are editing uh, you want the cache actually on to be on an SSD so that it's the cache is actually loading much faster you can also change here a few settings you can change the render cache format to be LT or proxy so it's a little bit faster or you can also go for the Cineforms if you are on Windows and pretty much uh, yeah these would make the rendering previews a little bit faster than rendering the higher uncompressed versions and pretty much these other tabs over here you don't really need to press yet uh, unless you are more deeper into editing and right now uh, if you have like a certain setting or custom setting right now here we can go on top here to this tab the presets tab we can press save as and save this as a preset that you want to use every time so you can quickly choose it out of this list but also you can change it to default so I've actually used this one I've saved this 2.5k 25p and you can right mouse click at it and 
press save as user default config. So every time you open DaVinci Resolve, it will be using these settings instead of the other default setting, which is 1080p at 24p. So we can actually close this now, uh, even though this button called cancel, but it's basically exit this uh, project settings window. And now we can import some footages. So what we used to do would be go to media and search here for the footages, but nowadays we can just drag and drop. You can also drag and drop onto the timeline, but I do not suggest to do that. You want to go to the video footage or the folder with the footage. So yeah, we have this folder here and you don't want to drag it into the media pool here. You want to drag it here where it says master. So it be a little bit more organized. So now we can see a folder called master. If you directly drag the folder here into the media pool, it would import all the footages, but it would not make a bin over here. So at least you can make a nice bin structure over here so you can easily get more organized with like a lot of different footages. So once we have it all imported, we now can actually scroll through every clip and watch them. So you can see when I move here left and right over the footage itself or over these buttons here or clips itself, you can see it showing up here in this preview window. However, if you move away, it will become black again. So to hold actually the clip onto into here, we just double click the footage and it will hold it here. So now we can scrub through it by dragging this little thing, or we can press space bar on your keyboard to play the video. So now the most important thing is we want to pre trim it. Uh, basically what it is, is we want to cut the footage in section in the sections that we already want instead of having to drag this entire clip which is super long so you don't want that and not cut it while or not do that many cutting onto your timeline itself so we just scrub through it and by pre-trimming it uh, we just basically choose the in and out so we choose where we want the clip to start. So maybe here where she sings and my focus is correct here. So we can either press these two buttons for the in or the out, or we can choose pressing it on the keyboard. On your keyboard, it's much easier with the I and the O. So I'm going to make sure also select, have this screen selected. Otherwise you, you be using I and O on something else. So you want this screen, I've clicked on this screen and now press I. So you can see here being highlighted, this is what you have selected. And we can now play by pressing spacebar and here press O. So now we have this small section actually selected. When we drag this onto the timeline, we can see it's just a small section instead of the entire clip. Also, we have two of these icons here on the bottom. So the left one is if we want to only import or uh, copy the footage over to the timeline without the audio. And the other one is only the audio. And of course, if you drag the clip from here, we have footage with audio. So because we are editing with a music, uh, we're just going to add a certain music on top of here. So we just only want to drag a clip without the audio. So let's look at some other footages. I've actually filmed this quite interestingly different style than normal. I've actually uh, filmed into reflections over here. I saw like a nice reflection in an arcade game. So you can see King of Fighters here. So that should be like a nice section here. Yes, over there. So 
So you do need to double click it. So that out and in here, drag this here. So let's actually grab a song. So you're just going to grab a random song quickly and we can import it here into master but we can also just directly drag it onto the timeline here but let's make it nicer put it in master so we can play it like this but we don't we really need to do that and just drag the song here onto the timeline one thing i do like to do is drag over here to make the audio more visible so you can see the audio wave a little bit better so you can see where there are the pops or like the beats going on where you want to cut it to so here we have like a loud clap so here we can trim this footage we can either drag this and make it shorter or extend the clip or we can cut it by pressing command or control B on Windows. So make sure you select the clip, otherwise you are cutting the entire timeline. So it would also cut the audio. So you want to select the clip, then command or control, and then B. So now we have cut it into two sections. Also make sure if you want to delete a section to first click on somewhere else and then select this clip. Otherwise it would just select both of the clips instead. So if you want to move it away, it will just drag both of them. So you want to click somewhere else and then make sure you only grab this part and you can see it's highlighted. And by deleting it, you just press delete on your keyboard. Now we have this big gap over here and we can remove this by pressing shift delete or we can select it right mouse click and then select this over here but shift delete of course is a little bit faster or of course you can just drag it and it would snap over here but uh, yeah the ripple delete with shift delete is a little bit faster to do so a few things how to move around on your timeline we can drag this red line to scroll about we can also do it here this red dot we can also scroll or drag it left and right to move and scroll around the timeline and we can also press on our keyboard to press spacebar to play and pause and we can use the keyboard left to jump one frame or right to jump one frame left and right to do like more specific look where you want to cut it and of course we have here this play forward or go to the start of a clip or the next start of a clip or the end of a clip and that was pretty much how to edit do simple edits inside of DaVinci Resolve so now to exporting so to export this we can go to deliver here so press this rocket to go to deliver so we're now inside of the deliver screen and what we are looking here at is the final uh, yeah timeline here so we can scroll through this timeline and play the video and here on the left top we see here render settings so we see presets that is made by DaVinci for YouTube Vimeo and more and we can press this arrow down to get a drop down to get like different resolutions we can choose from and yeah we can also of course go here on the bottom and do alterations to it ourselves. Um, yeah, we can render everything as a single clip or render everything out as individual clips, but we just want it to be a single clip for YouTube. And also here on top, uh, the file name we can't change, but we can here choose where we want it to be exported to so want it to be desktop user or Macintosh user user and then 
desktop. Press OK. So it will render to desktop. And here, not quite sure why it's QuickTime H264, but we can change this to MPEG4 H264. Resolutions. Um, yeah, there is no 2.5K again. We need to do that manually. So we can choose here customs and then choose and type in our own resolution for 2.5K. Quality here is restricted to this, but I know for 2.5K it needs to be 16,000 kilobytes because it's a 16 megabytes uh, bitrate we need for 2.5k uh, you can actually find those numbers on a different video and also YouTube changes those bitrates every time so you do need to look at the website or support page of YouTube for which bitrate you need single pass everything should be okay here audio also should be okay file here we can over here finally change the name so we can call this Ella at Kapok and here that should be okay and now we can press add to render queue so now we have it here on this side, on the right side, on render queue, and we can just press start render to render this clip out. So when we press it, we'll start rendering it. So once it's finished with rendering the video, it says here on top completed in 52 seconds. So it was a pretty quick render, even though we just only have two clips here. But uh, yeah, that was mainly it. Hopefully you guys liked this video and please give me a thumbs up if you want to see more upcoming videos about Resolve with more in-depth tutorials about effects and more. Please stick around and hit that subscribe button here below and make sure to hit that bell icon so you're always updated when I post a new video. See you guys the next time. Bye-bye.